um, there are two topics that I want to talk about this week or in the next week and a half or so. One of them is the Jada Pinkerton Will Smith scenario. Um, Um, we have Claudia sitting behind the camera again as always. Hi, my name is Melissa Jogi. If you've never watched any of this before, um, I'm just going to say this quickly. Do the clicky, sub subscribe, share, all of the lovely things. Um, yeah, and today we're going to get into an interesting topic. I asked on Instagram, um, there are two topics that I want to talk about this week or in the next week and a half or so. One of them is the Jada Pinkerton Will Smith scenario. Um, because I mean I asked people what they want to hear first and they said they want to hear this but I have been putting together my thoughts on this for the last couple of days not send some research people because I feel like people who do these videos and comment on certain things without understanding some of the nuances of the conversation is really stupid um, and yesterday I felt very different compared to what I feel today I did get the book in the process um, which I'm still going to read so my context might change even more so just keep that in mind um, I did watch her podcast with uh, Jay Shetty just to try and get some more understanding about the conversation so if you don't know what I'm talking about and you live under a rock um, Jada Pinkett essentially came out with her book called Worthy um, and I'll put the book here um, and in the book, she talks about the infamous slap with uh, Chris Rock that happened at the Oscars where her husband ended up defending her. Um, and I'm going to say her husband by law, because in any other aspect, officially now we know that they are not married. So um, also now that big blow up about us finding out that they're not married. So I want to address something else first. I know and I've seen plenty of videos of people saying Jada just stop sharing people are tired of talking about this they're tired of hearing Jada's business all of that and to be honest at some point I did feel like that because it was all over my feed everyone was discussing it when I saw it I shared it with like a crying face because in my mind I was just like how are you guys not married um, but I fell victim to the same thing that we all do um, the idea that the outside picture is actually what's going on internally um, and because I have insight to what that can look like in a marriage situation, I have really particular views on this that I think people are not really considering and why this is actually more or less, I say, a good-ish thing that this revelation came out because we kind of need to check ourselves and what it is we believe about other people and their relationships and we don't allow ourselves to do that because we want to believe that the world is all rainbows and fairy tales, which is the dumbest thing to me on the planet. We are currently living in the middle of one of the wars that has been discussed in the book of Revelation. It's been predicted, but we're carrying on as though we are so shook by it. That's the first thing. So last week she came out, the book came out this week. Last week she announced, I mean, in the book, uh, people had announced that her and Will have been separated for 10 years. Then I heard other someone say, no, it's not 10 years, it's seven years. In the book, it's seven years. It's since 2016. But you know, when these separations happen, um, even if it's not officially divorced, the separation has happened long before that. So I wouldn't be surprised that the separation emotionally and physically sort of happened from around her 40th birthday because she does talk about this birthday party that was thrown for her and she was the most unhappy that she's ever been, right? But there's so many things here that I think we need to really look at. And this isn't my... Okay, sorry. Move it a little bit back. Um, so this isn't my concise you know conclusion on what had happened or what is happening there is never a concise conclusion and that is the point of this video when someone is going through a life experience which is from the time you are born until the time you die there are a plethora of things that happen on that journey but when someone is famous and they are on a platform or even if they have a little bit of a following, like I have a tiny following, but 90% of the people that follow me and, and, and see my life assume that these highlights that they are um, given, not even given context to, that they see from a distance is actually who I am and what is currently happening in my life experience. 
which is wild to me because everyone is going through their own version of an experience and we all quantify that person based on what it is we see externally which first and foremost for me i feel like we need to get in a stage in 2023 where we have the emotional and and um mental maturity to understand that that is not all of who that that uh this whole what we know is not the whole of the person right we need to have a holistic view on who people are based on the fact that we want them to have a holistic view on who we are so i'm going to start by saying yesterday my views were very different based on the fact that all i was going on was the things that i was seeing on social media the articles that i did and then well making like this really bare minimum statement because i was really hoping he was going to say something and i did comment on a post um by jay Sh- shetty where i said i have a lot of questions and a lot of things to say because also i don't see wall chiming in this is his life after all so he should have some sort of something to say right um but based on what i've heard jada say it sounds like he is not the type of person who is going to be addressing any of this with the public um when the august alcina thing happened he decided to join the conversation and then pivot back right when they were going to get to the table because he wasn't ready to talk about what was actually happening with him what was happening in their relationship and actually being clear with the public because there comes a lot of scrutiny with the decisions that you make so a lot of what the narrative looked like for me yesterday was that jada was the one who was making all of the decisions based on their marriage based on the relationship and based on how they uh, are displayed in in the in the media i but there are a few things that she said in her interview with jay shetty that i really resonate with and one of them is our healing journey is not linear first and foremost it's not you're going to go from unhealed to healed it is a lifelong journey you would if you are actively working on your healing you are actively working on it until the day you die that's the first thing the second thing is humans don't for some reason and i said this in my video uh from yesterday now that w- yeah that would have been posted yesterday that we do not hold space for people to grow through what is ever going on with them so during the orca salsina phase she was ready to talk about the fact that they were not physically engaged in their marriage anymore that they were married on paper but not anything else but he had come to the table um by willingly by the way and decided that he didn't want that information out there because he wasn't ready to deal with it so she was at a phase with this part of my healing journey is done but he wasn't and she had made the choice to then hold space for him on where he was and sacrifice this sort of secret that she wanted out in public now i'm passionate about this in particular because i feel like we it's so easy to assume we know what's happening and especially when somebody is a celebrity we think like they love their entire lives out on screen when actually all they're loving out on screen is 2% of what it is we see the august alcina interview was wild right when they spoke about the august august alcina thing it was wild it went viral there was a lot going on there was a lot of conversation a lot of people felt that um she was sleeping around and this is the kind of conversation that should be happening behind closed doors but i beg to differ and because of someone who comes from a very similar experience in that regard there's a reason why i beg to differ we can't keep pretending that there aren't real difficulties in seasons of marriage that end up some other way involving other people whether that is intimately or not throughout relationships you're going to be faced with those things consistently how they are narrated may be problematic because it gives people a specific point of view and i feel like the interview they did about august um kind of gave and she spoke about this in her interview with jay shetty that it gave the uh, impression that she was the adult adulteress when that wasn't actually the narrative but i can understand why it was explained the way that it was because in that process she was still processing everything that had happened in words and who hadn't even fully seemed to have dealt with any of what had happened at that time so as far as i can tell some of that may be more spoken about in the book and i've only got it i think through uh, half of chapter 1 because i have a life but <laughs> i feel like if we look in context the thing they spoke about august alcina and all this coming out and some of the stuff that are coming out in the book and in the things about chris there's so much more here that speaks to the journey of healing that is normal if you're intentionally seeking it 
um, as opposed to this you guys are the poster child and we believe that everything you are doing is okay. So now we are beating Jada up because she's sharing too much of her life. This is crazy to me. I live in a city right now where guys sex is on display like food. People here like we have moved into a generation where sex literally is on the washing line. We don't even think twice before we're having some sort of engagement with people we barely know. And we're talking about it as though it is, it is, I don't know, it's like sleep, something we need to do. When that is supposed to be sacred. And here, someone is talking about the intimate parts of their healing journey. And we're just like, no, we can't hear that because it's just too much. Please, let us make a decision on what is too much and what is too little to share. Because when someone is vulnerable sharing something, because we feel uncomfortable about the narrative and because we don't want to deal with our own vulnerability, it's very easy to push back. And I'm going to be honest. At some level, I felt like that yesterday, right? I felt like that because in my mind, I was looking through this entire perspective and I was telling Claudia through my injured part, right? Through the view that says there's a control element here. But listening to the insights, listening to the way that Jada processed this entire situation really gave me some more context to what was actually going on without I having to tell the entire story. I don't necessarily need to know the whole story now because that's really none of my business. Let's start there, right? And the only reason the stuff is showing on your timeline is because everyone else who is watching it feels like it is their business. <laughs> so there's that. But then at the same time, um, if we actually paid attention to what is said in between the lines in the quiet moments and in these interviews, we would pay attention to the fact that this woman, number one, is intentionally doing healing work. I can count on one hand how many people actually physically know who's doing that, who's willing to take the risk to do that, right? Because it's risky. You have to deal with the inner parts of you you don't want to deal with. Secondly, marriage will expose parts of you that you didn't even know was damaged. So I can 100% see why she also felt the need that there were some instances she needed to protect Will because he hadn't faced those demons yet. Um, and he also spoke about some of those demons only being faced when he wrote his book, right? Um, we, I, we, we, we want to, let me talk, so if I talk about Gaza and Israel, for instance, we are fighting about the humanity of, 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 how we need to be more human in the situation and how uh, civilians are being killed and all of that stuff. We want to be use our humanity in those instances. But when it comes to people like this, who because a celebrity for some reason are not supposed to feel anything or supposed to have like normal lives, which is crazy. We look at it very differently. We are extremely judgmental. I, and I'm putting myself in the box, right? We're extremely judgmental. We're extremely opinionated. We have no context to what happened on the inside. We will just assume we know based on the little key elements that we see. I was telling Claudia earlier, the only thing that bothers me about this whole thing um, now compared to yesterday is the fact that I know the people who watch this are actually interested in getting my point of view. The highlight that I put on social media no, there's going to be so many more people who see that highlight and are bothered to see what it is I spoke in context. We know this with all people who are in the public eye, people who are in front of the camera. We only want to see the two second view that makes us feel comfortable with ourselves because the truth of the matter is we don't want to know the whole story. We want to know what resonates with us, our pain and our delusion. What's the new word? What? Delulu. We want to resonate with those parts because it makes us comfortable enough to not have to shift the way we feel, the way we move, and also work on healing stuff that we then haven't dealt with yet. We don't want to be triggered. This is why we're just going to all comment on the little that we have seen. There are almost 400 people who watched the Jay Shetty interview. There are millions more people in the world who are commenting on this thing right now. I can bet that most of those people are not going to go and watch that interview. I can bet that most of those people are not going to bother to get the book to get the full insight before they come up with some stupid opinion. It is crazy to me that we think like this. We have a lot of opinions on the war and how it's how we need to be, you know, um, Israel needs to be held responsible or Hamas is at fault or how many innocent children are dying. I'm at the narrative of children don't need to die because of stupid adults who can't make real decisions. That's that's my point of view. But we won't give these people the same grace. Please make that make sense to me. If we are going to 
be humans for these people, we need to be humans for these people as well. But we choose it based on the trauma we don't want to deal with. And that is the craziest part to me. This is why this left wing, right wing idea doesn't make sense to me. Because my personal experience is to me that if I am fighting for Palestine and or I'm fighting for Israel, for instance, I am choosing based on my personal belief system. And that was informed by something usually that happened to me in my past. It would have been very easy for me to say, and this is what, what my opinion was yesterday. It would have been easy for me to say, no, Jada is giving all controlling spouses. Um, and I did say this to you yesterday. This is what I thought. Um, the, giving them permission to say, um, no, 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 I will, I will handle this thing when it needs to be handled on my time. You just need to keep being married to me and keep keeping the story up because that's what it would look like on the surface. But if you really dig down deep in it, you realize that this woman actually has a lot more introspection. She's doing a lot more self-work on herself than that simple narrative. The, the one thing like I wanted to say earlier was that I don't agree with is the way that this came out. I do believe that it's the information that we needed because I feel like it's going to force some people to first and foremost look more deeply at their marriages, look more deeply on the things that happen in marriage that we are, or in our relationships or even with ourselves that we refuse to deal with. But then also, I feel like if she didn't do this, we wouldn't have another opportunity to talk about the actual instances where this happens so much. In South Africa, we come out of a generation where there's tons of parents who have never been divorced. They're just separated. They, they're not divorced on paper. They, they're just separated and they're really good friends there for the kids, but they kind of move on with their own lives. And then it's always the secret conversation in family circles. We see this everywhere. We just don't want to talk about it because it's such a uh, shameful thing to do. This has been happening. It's not like it's new. They had to put on a face because they didn't want people to talk about them in that way. They'd already had so much go on. And, I, and it sounds, from what I can gather and from the way Will is, is responding on social media, he doesn't want people bombarding him with this stuff. He's got enough going on in his life to have to still now answer questions to why he's separated and why they'd never told anybody. They didn't tell anybody because it was nobody's business. <laughs> can we start there? <laughs> it was really nobody's business. The fact that they chose to tell us eventually is a privilege. Secondly, this shouldn't even be any of our problem. I am glad they spoke about it because it's going to force us to have conversations we're refusing to have, right? The thing, I'm coming back to this the whole time. The thing that did bother me about it, like I said, was the way they came out. Because I feel like her book would have been received so much better and she would have been received so much better. So I know in, 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 in the moment, you're not thinking about hindsight image, right? Um, especially if you're an authentic person. If you're inauthentic, you're thinking about your image first. But an authentic person is not hindsight thinking about their image. They're thinking about truth. Because truth matters to them more about, than the way that they look. Which I can highly respect her for. But what I do wish she had done was maybe leak some of this through the media bit by bit because then that section wouldn't have been such a shock when it came out right based on the fact that people had already created this narrative around her and uh, or the August Alsina matter and that Will was this victim um, and then him smacking Chris Rock and everybody having this narrative of um, yeah she's the one holding the purse strings here and she's kind of controlling what he does if she had released this more slowly with sections of um, we, we chose to keep this quiet because of A, B and C and we just needed to keep our privacy and we have come to this conclusion together with, with Will, Will chiming in just a little bit. I think the blow would have been easier and it wouldn't have impacted him so much where he's had to completely go offline. Um, and I'm going to talk from hindsight here. There are a lot of things that we do in the moment that we can't predict how they're going to end up. With them, a lot of the stuff has been sensationalized and because this has come out the way that it has, it has been sensationalized extremely, right? But what is the point of understanding grace if we're not going to give them grace for the situation? Um, I, I, I didn't, I, I was gonna, like, so I got the book, started reading it yesterday, and then when I got through half of the first chapter, I changed my mind because I thought, uh, I'm maybe not going to enjoy this very much, but listening to her interview now, I really do want to read it. And the reason I do want to read it is 
more than anything, I feel like there are lessons I'm going to learn that I would have never thought I'd be able to learn. Um, other than the fact that, look, y'all may not agree with me. Other than the August Alsina disaster, the Red Table Talk was literally the catalyst for the thing that saved my life. I would have not known about narcissism and abuse in the way that I know it today if it was not for Dr. Ramani coming on that show. I remember the day I watched that show and immediately started binge watching Dr. Ramani and cried for three days realizing that my life was a sham. So maybe I have a little bit of bias, but that was that show had helped so many people in the ways that they did. I just feel like we need to understand that this woman is a holistic person, that there are views and insights that she has to a life that so many other people commenting on this do not have and refuse to do because they are, they, they are too lazy to do that self-work. But at the same time, we, sometimes we don't know how something's going to turn out until after the fact, right? And from someone who has experienced that punch for punch, you kind of just sit in the, I was honest. That's all I can hold on to. I was honest when and could, when and, and, and when I could, right? And when I was offered the opportunity to be honest, I wasn't thinking about how I was going to look at the end of the day, but I needed to be true to myself and be honest about myself. Whether you make an assumption on what I say is your responsibility. It's not mine, baby. Whatever you think about me is on you. But at the end of the day, we have to reckon with the fact that sometimes you have to make decisions that are purely based on truth. Because the truth that you, the truth, my truth may not be your truth of the situation, but what I'm living through, you can't live through because you are not me. And that is the perspective I'm looking at from this. I'm pretty sure I'm going to see a lot more insights and thinking and healing based on the book. There are some stuff that have come up that I may not agree with with regards to like the ayahuasca that she did with her, son, her children and all of that. I don't necessarily, necessarily agree with any of that stuff, but I don't have to agree with someone in order to learn from them. And that is something that we need to learn to understand just in life in general. What, what, what enamors me about all of this is that so many of our generation between 30 and 60 are sitting in the judgment seat and not even take into, into context that there's so many parts in our own experience that would be sensationalized in the same way if we were celebrities. The fact that they're celebrity is not their fault. We made them celebrities. It's not like they said, pick me for celebrity. They were like, pick me for a phone because I'm a great actor and I'm going to excel at my craft, which is what they did. Fame just happens to come with the job they do. If you were an accountant and fame came with your job, you'd do it because you love it, not because it came with the fame. So we really need to start thinking more holistically about the way that we respond to these things and more so what are the things in this conversation that we are not thinking about? Um, what are the, 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 the quiet moments in between these conversations, the thoughts, the people who are saying they are tired of seeing Jada, she must stop talking about her life. Number one, are you saying that because there are truths about your life that you do not want the public to know? That's first questionable. Um, but the second thing is, what gives us permission to shut someone else's truth down based on the fact that we are tired of hearing it. If you're tired of hearing my truth, that's on you, you can go. I'm not asking you to stick around for my truth. And that's the one thing I can highly respect Jada for. There's something that Jay Shetty said to her that I was telling Claudia earlier, someone had said to me through my journey, um, that it takes a lot of brave, it takes, uh, it's, it's a very brave step to make the kind of decisions to separate, move away, change your life, change your dynamic and seek healing and growth through the process and w when I heard Jay say it and someone I have a very close friend who's been saying that to me was some of the things that I thought were really terrible decisions that I had made it made me realize that when you're in that moment you're not thinking that you're brave what you are doing is the best thing you know how to do in that moment and for the most part those of us who like truth honesty and who've existed through certain levels of neglect and abuse our first point of contact is 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 truth we have to be honest to our core that's what we hold on to when we're going through trouble so those are the things we're going to act on first before we think about anything how we look our conse the consequences of those actions all of those we make mistakes yes we make horrible mistakes in those moments 
But at the same time, we, the only thing we have to stick to is our truth. The only thing we have to stick to is the truth of the narrative of the story. My truth and the actual events are two different things because I'm going to change them based on my point of view. But I, what I've learned through this journey is I can give you two versions of the story. My emotional truth through the situation and the actual events that happened, which other people can narrate for you word for word. We need to be able to hold space for both of those things. We need to be able to hold space for people to be all of who they are without judgment for the fact that they can't be who we think they should be. And this is what I said on my first podcast for this season. I guess we're called it season two, right? Um, yeah, so those are my immediate thoughts on this. Um, I just want us to stop being so narrow-minded. Can we just for once try and use our brains for all that it was made for? This narrow-mindedness is, is showing proof that we are ill-educated and we are choosing to be that way because the information is available at all times. If you are willing to learn about people, how the world works, how things work, how to grow, you are actually going to find that information. No one's going to come to you and hand that to you on a silver plate, right? We are responsible for our own learning. Um, and I get this narrow-minded point of views get a lot of hits. But at the end of the day, we are just teaching people to be as dumb as us, which should not be happening. I feel like in 2023, we really have no excuse for that crap to be happening. So do yourself a favor. When things like this come up, do the investigation. Um, do some of your own digging into what is actually going on and get everybody's point of view. Get different contexts. Don't just go on your point of view or the one point of view that, is, that has triggered your trauma. <laughs> because generally, people respond to the trigger from their trauma. <laughs> So yeah, that's me. Um, let me know your thoughts. I really want to know your thoughts on this. Um, subscribe, share if you liked what it is I spoke about. I just want us to be more critical thinkers. Um, and I'm hoping that this video may be the catalyst for some people who don't use critical thinking and have become lazy in their thinking because it's easier. Um, actually helps you discover that you may be able to do or think and move in the world more wholesome and happier, I think, because you are more curious about the world than this one-minded, straight-thought view of what existence should look like. So, that's me.